Please explain the meaning of emigration. What kind of experience is my soul passing through? And what for? What do I need to know to preserve myself as well as understand and accept another culture at the same time? What can a Slavic soul learn from Arabs, Africans or Far Eastern people? What qualities or elements? It is a very interesting question related to experience. Let's figure it out. First, let's clarify that a soul has no race. Such figures of speech as the Slavic soul and the Aryan soul, this sort of formulation is not entirely correct. A soul is an informational structure, a sort of projection, the consciousness of a certain god. The god may belong to the Slavic pantheon, the Celtic pantheon, the Norse pantheon, or a pantheon of African gods or Asian gods. At the same time, we already know that one and the same force can project itself in completely different pantheons. Therefore, attaching oneself to a particular culture in the context of the soul might not be completely right. It is just in this incarnation you were born into a bloodline, into a certain cultural environment that has to do with Slavism. And in your life it happened, either accidentally or on purpose, that you found yourself in another cultural environment. Why did this happen? Is it an accident, a system error, or does it make any sense? Does that make sense for the system, for you personally, or for your God? All these questions need to be answered. To a great extent, these answers can never be general, but always individual, individual to you and your force. Therefore, it will not be entirely correct to answer these questions for sure by summarizing them in general terms. But we'll try to look at the variables. As a matter of fact, what could it be and what could be the reasons for it? As you know, a person is born in a particular kin, under specific rules, that belong directly to the egregor of the bloodline. These specific rules are what the family exists, grows and develops for. All relatives and descendants who are born into a particular family and have kin blood carry a bloodline memory. All of them more or less carry this memory within themselves, this burden, or what is that it is needed by this bloodline, the reason why the members of the kin related by the same blood exist. And according to the history of the formation of egregorial systems and bloodlines, we have talked a lot about this, there are many videos and books written by me on this subject, you know that kin is an unequal and an even structure. There are those to whom the kin looks first and burdens them to solve kinship challenges more than others. There are those who are not so strongly tied to it, to whom the kin gives a greater degree of freedom. There are those whom the kin is ready to sacrifice at any moment if some trouble happens with the rest of the kinship. And there is a force that holds, seals the whole kinship, all its members, by informational connections as if locking them onto itself. This figure is called the Regina of the kin. You surely know all this. If your kin lets you out on the pasture, it means that you're in the living space of the bloodline, having the maximum degree of freedom. And it is not that you have a minimum degree of protection, but at least you are less burdened by the kin's care. And in such case, you get the opportunity to go to other lands to gain experience that is for your bloodline as well for yourself. A woman who, for example, marries and lives for a foreign land, certainly transitions to another bloodline unless otherwise stated. Because all systems, except the matriarchal one, basically have a patriarchal function to include the newly arrived woman in its inner body, without leaving her the right to be bound to her primary bloodline, 
again, unless otherwise stated. In this case, a person will be making gains not for her own kin, but for herself personally, since the gaining of experience is no longer connected to the bloodline to such a degree. Whereas personal experience begins to be gained. And this way, the essence that is the essence of your God is being activated. By diving into a different atmosphere, perhaps slightly different from the one of the pantheon your God is tied to, you start gaining experience from entirely different cultures. What for? Well, obviously for diversity, for a change, to receive information that was not previously available. Situations like that never happen by accidents. Even if it may seem that external circumstances have brought you into the situation in an absolutely crazy, chaotic way. But it's not like that. There must be specific needs that make you get into these life circumstances and commit to other lands. And this is how these needs manifest themselves. If you go to another land, Kaligana, and you're asking yourself why did it happen, look around you. What can this land teach you? What is so special on this land that is lacking on yours? What are the significant differences between the people, culture, rules and civilizations? What are the achievements of your civilization? And what are the achievements of the civilization you are currently exploring? Pretend you were a scientist, or a traveler, or perhaps an ethnographer who is trying to understand what information was missing in the system that you were born into. Everything is needed for something, and if you are able to grasp this assignment, then your relationship to the land you are now living in and to your inner technical task of studying something different will become clearer to you and, as a consequence, more successful. Because understanding is already half the battle. And I really hope and wish that in your case everything will turn out just like that.